She's an entrepreneur in public health and international development and a member of the class of 2014, Bhavna Savanand. How cool is this, you guys? Seriously, how cool is this? This is so exciting. Let me hear it one more time. I'm here to tell you a secret. You know those health officials that tell you to exercise more and eat better? That tell you about the obesity epidemic, about how two-thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese? And then they make you feel like you're not doing enough to feel healthy and be healthy? Well, they're not telling you everything you need to know. Exercise and nutrition are just the tip of the iceberg. The real reason we have a chronic disease crisis on our hand right now is structural. It's because of where and how we live. I've spent the last seven years in public health trying to find solutions to our rising diabetes rates and our growing obesity problem. And here's what I've learned. It's not about exercise. Exercise is not enough, because even if you exercise a sufficient amount every week, you're still at risk for chronic disease because of being sedentary all day. And the real issue then is that the way our neighborhoods are designed make it really easy for all of us to be sedentary. As Americans, we love large homes. We want backyards bigger than our neighbors. We want three-car garages. And we love living on those streets that are windy and really go nowhere. And so, we build places like this, which then results in us having to act in behaviors like this. <laughs> Some of us more so than others. And so how do we fix our chronic disease epidemic right now? What do we do? Like I said, it's not just about exercising and eating better. I mean, that's still a part of it. But we need to go back in time and really learn from our history. We need to figure out what went wrong along the way and when that happened. So come with me on a trip to the 19th century. The Industrial Revolution essentially paved the way for our megacities as we know them to be today. The Industrial Revolution saw people moving into cities for jobs, and because transportation was lacking, people lived close to where they worked. The main issue then became overcrowding and the spread of infectious disease. And so sanitary reform, which could be considered the grandfather of public health, created a separation of land uses. Zoning was invented to keep us away from the industrial toxins that were so harmful to us. And so we moved away, we built suburbs, we enjoyed our vast green space. We had the privilege of space in America, and we took it. We had no way of knowing that zoning would lead to our obesity crisis today. I told you I had a secret, but I didn't tell you the entire secret. While those public health officials have been barking at you to exercise more and eat better, they've also been working on fixing our cities. I can tell you through my experience that more and more today, public health officials are working with transportation engineers, urban planners, and even architects to redesign our suburban environments. Researchers have been able to identify five key elements of our environment that most impact our health. Density, the number of people that live in a certain neighborhood. Proximity to services, can we walk to run errands? Mixed land use, how many different functional buildings are there in a particular area? Street connectivity, do we have interconnected streets or windy streets, like I mentioned before? And five, aesthetics and streetscape, how pleasant is the walking experience? Researchers are now building models to understand and predict how to manipulate each of these elements to create healthy neighborhoods. 
The idea is to build cities that look like this. Oh, no, wait, that's Amsterdam. That's where I'm going on my next vacation. <laughs> okay, don't worry. My master plan is not for all of us to move to Europe, even though some of us would love that. We're actually doing some pretty amazing things here at home. So let's leave Europe aside for a while and come back to America. And let's go to New York City. Greening rooftops. New York City has initiatives that encourage certain buildings in certain neighborhoods to have green rooftops. And the reasoning behind this is because concrete is directly related to the amount of heat in a particular area. In fact, the more concrete you have in a neighborhood, the more you have the heat island effect, which is an artificial increase in temperature in the summer months by up to 10 degrees. And so green rooftops cool and clean the environment. Those of you that are from New York are probably familiar with the High Line. But those, for those of you that are not, the High Line it was an abandoned above ground railway line running through the middle of Manhattan that was converted into pedestrian green space. It runs more than a mile and stretches across three neighborhoods on the west side of Manhattan and draws people from all over to come and walk. It's essentially a walking trail with green space. San Jose has rezoned to create mixed land use with commercial on the bottom and residential on the top. It's pretty amazing that the, just that change alone and some aesthetics and street design can draw more people to walk. Mint Plaza in San Francisco is an amazing example of taking an auto-focused alleyway that might have been pretty unsafe and converting it into a public open space with farmers markets and weekly events. And it draws pedestrians from everywhere. The list of examples goes on. Portland, Denver, Austin, Houston, even Atlanta and Seattle. It's pretty amazing. Designing neighborhoods for healthier living is coming down to a science. And while it may take some time to see results because the development cycle is long, the momentum is building quickly. Interestingly, all these new developments, this new way of designing cities isn't really new at all. This new urbanism is actually the old way of building cities. So now we know what is wrong with our neighborhoods. We just need support from all angles to fix it. We need collaboration between different levels and divisions of government. We need systems level change. We need public and private partnerships. And we need change from you, our consumers, so that you start demanding more of these types of neighborhoods from your developers so they know that a market exists. So I want you to dream a little with me about the future of America, about the possibility of lasting change, about decreasing our costs of health care and reducing our burden of disease, about a time when, instead of picking homes for their sizes, we pick homes based on whether or not we can walk to buy milk, whether or not our kids can ride a bike to school, by whether or not we can rely on transit. This is the vision I have of a country where our future generations will be proud of the healthy, sustainable neighborhoods in which they live, and the beautiful cities we built will make history. Thank you.